Welcome to Michael's Record Collection. I'm very excited to be joined today by Stefan Lill of Vandenplas. Thank you for your time, sir. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. I am very excited to talk to you about a brand new CD and DVD set called Live and Immortal. It's coming out August 12th on Frontiers Music and uh, features, you know, the band doing what it does best, playing live. And I want to start out, though, like I usually do, by asking my guest about your musical origin story. Now, you uh, do you remember like your the first song, the first uh, pop or rock song that really caught your attention when you were a child? Mm, it's it's hard to remember the first song, honestly. Um, uh, I was a bit um, focused on on metal first from my older brother. Which is he is not into metal at all, but he bought in uh, 90, 80, something like that. He bought the Wheels of Steel uh, CD uh, LP this, uh, from Saxon, okay. and um, before that I was um, I was going into hard rock like ACDC and uh, these things. I started with ACDC. This is the first time I came in contact with rock music, and I think the first time I. Uh, I got in contact with rock was um, we had a kind of uh, I, I don't know the exact name like flea market flea market you know mm -hmm. it's a market where you sell things for cheap money use things yeah and um, uh, I had some books which I sold um, and uh, beside me there was a guy who who sold an LP and on the LP there was a guy holding um, a guitar with a lightning which was the high voltage from ACDC okay. and I was so impressed but I was like. 10 or 11, something like that. And I was so impressed by this cover. So I was going to this guy and said, what, what is this? He said, it's rock music. And um, I said, can I buy it? And so I bought this LP and I was very proud. I was a young kid. And at home I took, I had very, I had this old thing where I put the LPs on, and, uh, not a big stereo. And then I heard, heard, uh, heard a TNT and that's it. And then I was in love with um, with rock music, with uh, with ACDs, and especially with uh, Angus Young. Mm -hmm. And he was the guy who, who was uh, responsible for for me to start with guitar, because I I, I said to my mom and my dad I want to play guitar, and um, they said you have to take lessons. So I said okay, <laughs> and I took a kind of catalog and said I want this guitar, which was like. <laughs> Uh, Gibson as Paul in black. I think I, I choose the most expensive guitar. What what was in the in the catalog? Of course. And, and it, 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 they said, uh, "Are you crazy? You have to start with this wooden guitar. They called it wooden guitar. You know, a, a, a normal regular guitar. Acoustic. What you take for <laughs> for learning guitar? So first two or three years was just playing this regular guitar, which was boring for me." And then I bought an SG, not a Gibson, and then I, I started to learn by myself songs. So this was the, the start, but I don't have like, um, it's not like I heard smoke on the water. And then I said, ah, oh, I start with music. It was more a combination of different things. Yeah. You, um, can you tell me a little bit about how Van and Plaus came together? You guys all have done musical theater projects and you're all kind of into that kind of thing as well as, as metal. Um, how did you guys meet and form this band? Um, it was first like that, that my, my brother uh, was joining this band because um, a friend of my older brother, they they had a band and the, the drummer left and he knew that Andreas, my brother, was playing drums and so he was coming into Fantenblas, into the band, which was first called Exodus, which is not a joke, it was really Exodus. Later on, we realized that there's another band called Exodus, so we have to get another name. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, he was playing in this band. They did a few concerts, not too much. Uh, they changed uh, the, the name in, in Fun and Blast later on. And uh, then the singer, like like in the beginning of every band, some some members change, another singer is was coming. And finally, there was um, Andy joining the band, uh, Andy Coons. And um, yeah, so one year after another, a new member came, and so we they had like uh, Andreas. On, on drums and, mm -hmm. and the ba former bass player and Andy, and then they had a bigger concert, and uh, the the former guitar player was maybe kind of a bit of afraid of this big concert, so he said like two days before the shows or three days before the shows, um, he said he, he doesn't play the show, 
So they had no guitar player. Wow. And uh, the, the, the thing is, at this time, they were rehearsing in our house, in the, in the, in the cellar. Mm -hmm. We had a big room where Andreas had his drums. And I was joining every rehearsal because I was a fan of music. And I played guitar. And so uh, the, the guitar player didn't show up. And the other band members were standing around and said, what shall we do? And then uh, they looked at me and said, hey, Stefan, you can play the songs. You are at every rehearsal. And I said, yeah, I can, <laughs> but not uh, that good as the other guitar player. And they said, don't care about it, but you know the songs. And so you played a concert. But I was 15. So okay. a young kid. Yeah. And my, <laughs> my reaction was, I have to ask my parents. <laughs> that was my first reaction. <laughs> so, no joke. So because yeah. with 15, you can say I go to a concert, you know, it's getting late and all these things. It's, it's uh, not so easy. Yeah. And so we were going upstairs in the living room, my brother and the band members, and they said, uh, hi, Mr. Mrs. Lil, we have a problem. The guitar player left, but your other son, son can play the show. <laughs> so then they said, yeah, but you have to take care of him. He's very young and all these things like parents do. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so we rehearsed and I played the show. And that was the time when I joined the band. That's the story. And wow. from this day on, we are uh, together with Andy and Andreas and me. And then, yeah, uh, Thorsten and Günther were coming up, uh, coming to the band like end of the 80s, beginning of 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, in the beginning, it was um, with this, uh, we didn't, from this time on, when, when Günther and Thorsten are in the band, there were no lineup changes. But, but before, like, I think every band uh, can tell the same story. Some people come, some people go. Yeah. Yeah, well, you guys are coming up on thirty years since the uh, release of your first album. That's that's amazing. What got, what keeps you guys together when so many other lineups of so many other bands have uh, have called it quits or gotten into arguments and and broken up? What keeps you guys going? Yeah, yeah, like in every family, it's not that easy. It's not sunshine every day. You know, that's that's um, I think quite normal. But we have a, a lot of common things where we believe in. This is the, the music we like, like this progressive rock or progressive metal. Um, you have to find musicians which are kind of able to do it and which, which like to do that. And you have to uh, believe in that music because it's not that kind of commercial music. You don't earn a lot of money with this kind of music. It's not commercial. It's not radio music. You know, we have Dream Theater for sure, but that's it. Mm -hmm. So beside that, no other band, I think, uh, can make a big fortune out of th this kind of music. Uh, but beside that, we have these theater things going on. And this is a very important part of Fun Plus because we write and wrote, we had like, we have like five theater productions right now, which where we wrote the whole, the complete concept, the lyrics, the story, the music, everything. So, and um, this is done by Andy and Günther and me uh, together with sometimes with the, the chief of the uh, theater in Kaiserslautern, which who's also sometimes takes care about the story because he's a great guy, which has a lot of uh, knowledge in, in theater things. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and um, that's a big, big part of Funken Glass since the beginning of the 90s. It started, um, oh, oh, it was oh, like a lot of things coincidence, stories too long. We played Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar in, in a town in, in Kaiserslautern, in uh, Germany, in the beginning of the 90s where the conductor was searching a band for the theater and they, he heard us and he said, I want this band. I want this sound. Can you play with an orchestra? We never did before. We never played with a conductor, but the answer was for sure. Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone for asked sure. if you can do something and, and there's a job on the line. You say yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have, you have, uh, like, you know, if you, you have to, you have this, you know, you have no, it's, you have these things, and with, uh, when you are a young guy, you don't care about these. The, you, you you care about rock music, but then he said, "Yeah, but you have to know. We have we have uh, the notations, and you have to to play from the sheets, and yeah, we could do it, but we never did it before in a professional way. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a great adventure because we got uh, the, the the sheets of um, the, of music and." Um, we're driving to the theater in a big room with 30 
um, studied musicians, violins, cello, everything, and then the conductor said, okay, three, four, and then we started, and then do, 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 and then it starts, it was so funny, and after the first rehearsal, we said, it's absolutely crazy, we play with an orchestra, and um, from this day on, we, um, we knew, and it was our goal to establish the band also in the theater, because there, it's possible for a musician to earn some money for your for, for the job you are doing mm -hmm. and in 2006 we got the chance to write the first uh, theater production the, this rock musical Abydos mm -hmm. and after this we had Christ Zero and then we had Ludus Danielis uh, we had um, Chronicles of the Immortals and Everyman and now we had uh, we have since one year run about we have um, Last Paradise Lost and uh, the good thing is we can play it in or directly from the start in three different theaters, two in Germany and one in Austria, mm -hmm. which is great. I think this possibility, not every band has this, or I don't know if even another band has this possibility to do that. Yeah. And this is absolutely great. Yeah, absolutely. steady work for you guys and you have income and, and then you can do the things that you want to do. So that's, uh, that's all great. Yeah, but it takes a lot of time. Yeah. When the people, sure. it was a time um, uh, when the people said, "Hey, uh, years ago, you said, ah, it's already three years ago. Then you um, uh, ha released a new uh, CD. Uh, are you so lazy? What are you doing?" And uh, and I said, "Yeah, uh, but uh, and you're not playing live." I said, "You're right. You're not playing live with Fun and Glass, but I played in between like 100 and something shows." Yeah. And they said, "Where?" And I said, "In the theater." So, uh, and, and I, 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 I realized for the people who like to see Fun and Glass as a band live on stage, it's disappointing. I understand that totally. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the stuff we are playing in the theater, it's not only this rock production, it's, it's, it's Jesus Christ Superstar, but it's also jazz, which is a musical, or Evita, which is a musical, mm -hmm. Little Shop of Horrors, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, the, uh, musicals like that and the people don't who are into progressive rock they don't necessarily want to see this kind of music with yeah. other people and say they want to see Vanden Blas. yeah so yeah. i understand that they are disappointed that we don't play live too much but uh we have to explain that as musicians you also have to get something in your refrigerator <laughs> yes. and you need to go to the gasoline station and mm -hmm. all these things and um, so you have to earn some money. So, or you are a poor musician uh, <laughs> who just lives for the music and for the applause. But you know, it's 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 not like that. You need your money to 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 pay all your stuff what you need uh, during the year. And uh, so you have to do something. And a lot of musicians they nowadays they have a regular job, regular job. They go to work from nine to five and then they rehearse. Um, and our regular job is, for example, going to the theater and play or giving lessons, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's great. Um, what uh, what made you guys decide that Van den Plaats lyrics should be in English rather than German? <laughs> uh, I think when we started this kind of music, there was no band singing in German. Okay. But, uh, and for us, it was the sound of the, the English language is smoother somehow it, and it sounds international so and uh, with, with German the, the German pronunciation I think even if I talk I think it sounds sometimes maybe even a, a bit harder than for, for other people uh, sometimes we talk in English and the people say ah uh, are you angry with somebody and I said well, <laughs> no why and they said, ah, I said, why? And they said, ah, you talk so, so, it's so hard. And it, you talk so uh, kind of <laughs> aggressive. And I said, no, I, I just said something nice to someone. <laughs> so I think uh, it's it's like that. Um, the, 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 if we talk, it sounds a bit hard. And the German language sounds hard. I mean, you know, Rammstein. Yeah. 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 So, but they do everything uh, like um, over the top. You know, we don't talk in German like Rammstein is singing with this R, ah, with the kind of, you know, he's doing this really kind of um, 
uh, not aggressive, but it's very, uh, what's the word, um, martial, uh, like, um, no, what's the word? Um, I, I don't know the, the exact, it, it sounds very hard mm -hmm. yeah, for, for everybody. And um, he, they found this special place to do this. And for, for them, it was big luck. The people totally liked it. Yeah. And, and accept it and so but the same thing is we have a, a lot now a, a lot of bands who are singing in in, in german um but a lot of bands they are in, in this kind of um what is the word Mid midi medieval midi um, like in, in like in the 16th century you know yeah. it's it's so they, they're singing about dragons and castles and knights and yeah, a lot yeah. of bands in, in in the german scene these bands are singing in german and which is great and it, it fits together this kind of lyrics which is a kind of like as i said dragons castles knights some mm -hmm. fights and big armies and so these things like that and that fits that's good but it's not our cup of tea yeah gotcha so van den Plaas is a, a band that plays very different music from the ACDC that you fell in love with. What other uh, influences did you find along the way for, for your guitar playing? For me personally? Mm -hmm. uh, for, for sure, Paul Gilbert. Oh, good. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and um, uh, George Lynch. John Sykes. John Sykes. He's, for me, I think, on number one. Yeah. I like the sound and his playing. And I... I um, I just thought, funny, I just saw a, a video today from a guy who played absolutely crazy stuff. Absolutely crazy. Sweeping, tapping, fast, unbelievable technical wise. I can play that. I can play 20% of that. <laughs> unbelievable. But it didn't touch me at all. Yeah. It didn't touch me at all. I, it's it's great, and I'm jealous. I, I would like to to play that, uh, but I can't. Um, uh, so uh, it would be great for me if I could do this. But there's one special thing which I always tell to my students: when you play when you play a solo or you, when you compose a solo, you can play fast and fast. It is cool. But is the listener? Is it possible for the listener to sing your solo after he heard it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not everything, but some parts. If you remember, da 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 da, Unchain the Night. You never forget yeah. that. You know, something like that. And um, George Lynch plays very very fast, but a lot of times he had these great melodies, and you remember these melodies. Yeah. And uh, this uh, th that influenced me a lot the the mix between fast runs and melodies. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm a kid of the the eighties when all these guitar heroes uh, showed up, and um, that influenced me a lot. And after when when these other guitar player came with all these crazy sweepings, whatever, it's. Honestly, I admire them. It, mm -hmm. It's great, and I. Uh, but I, for me, um, it I. I never thought. Oh, I spent days and days and days because in, in learning sweepings, mm -hmm. because it, it it never touched me that much. Yeah, the technical so I, the technical side is good, and you admire that. But you would rather have hooks in your playing. Absolutely. Yeah. When, when I when I I think that's the, also if you if you look at I, I I have guitar students and they ask, can I play the solo of eighteen alive from Skid Row? Da 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 da, and they are sixteen. So I ask myself why. Uh, to, to, right, right, we are choosing these young guys, this kind of solo. First, good, it's an easy solo, but it has a melody. What you can, and this melody is for them, um, they can remember this melody. And it's a great, great solo, even it's not fast at all. And if you, if you take a look at uh, uh, Jake E. Lee, Bark at the Moon, if you, if you heard the solo and heard this, uh, the, the, the end solo, from this park at the moon, you know, you, you remember that and you think this is so great. And at life, everybody was, was looking at Jake Lee and said, ah, when is the solo coming? And that what sometimes that's, I'm missing that sometimes in this 
music of, from from today, but I have to say I don't listen to music nowadays. I don't listen to any, to no music. Wow. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't, <laughs> I can't remember when I, I, I listen to music because I'm giving lessons, all these things. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I have really, if you ask me when I bought the last CD, I have to say that's a long time ago. Yeah. Or, or my, 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 my wife, she, she gives me a present. It's a new CD from Ozzy Osbourne, uh, for example. But um, the t I'm the opposite of Andy. Andy, the singer, He's totally into music. He knows every new band and he listen to this, listen to that. Uh, in, in, in the car, you get in the car, hey, listen to that. And then he turn up the volume. I'm like, oh, Eddie, my ears. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I, I don't, I, I don't listen to music. Yeah. Well, let's get to the band here. The band lineup is uh, Andy Kuntz on vocals, uh, yourself, uh, Stefan Lill on guitars. Uh, Gunter Verno on keyboards, Torsten Reichert on bass, and Andreas Lill on drums. And Andy writes basically all the lyrics, and most of the music is, is either you or Gunter or a combination? Um, mo mo last CDs, it was almost most of the songs I wrote. Like we had like six, uh, seven or eight songs. So it was, it was like that. I wrote like six something like that. Mm -hmm. And Günther wrote one or two, or I uh, wrote one with Andy. That was, um, it was, was like that. Um, it, it depends on who has ideas which fit together to the concept. And um, yeah, it was like that. Years before, it was more than Günther and me uh, divided the songs, like in Price Zero, for example. Mm -hmm. We had like, every, we had both like four songs or five songs, or uh, he wrote a ballad with Andy, for example. Yeah. It's it's like that. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I write some more, and sometimes uh, it, it depends on the ideas. Well, I think it's kind of lucky then uh, that you got to be the guitar player for this band because uh, you're doing so much of the writing. Uh, what, what what do you mean by that? I mean when you know when when you got to be when when you got to replace the guitarist who was there before you, um, you end up in this band and you end up writing so much of the music. So I guess it was good for the for Vandenplas for you to, uh, for that to have happened, for you to have been the guitar player? Um, the, the thing is, when you are in a, in, a, in a band, without songs, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can cover songs, for sure. And if you do it well, you can play in your area and you can be a great musician. But if you want to play uh, in, in another country, you know, if we if we said, "I we do, can we play at the Brock Power in USA?" and they say, "I would, what, what are you playing?" Ah, we cover songs from this, 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 this band. <laughs> so Glenn says, "Yeah, it's great, but we need bands we which do which are doing songs of their own." Mm -hmm. And that's a very big part of my side and the fun and blast that we are able to express ourselves in this kind of music. I'm not a I'm not a crazy artist, you know, who lives in a different world, not like that. But it's it's great that if you have a riff and you sit in front of, the, of your computer and you see ah oh, I have this riff and fits to that song and uh, that riff, and then you create a song and finally you have it on CD. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, the the satisfying moment. Do you guys write the music and then Andy writes the lyrics afterward, or does he write yeah. lyrics? Yeah, okay, yeah. that way. It, uh, it, it's, some things. Um, they grow like that. I think maybe all like 99% or 98% it was like that. that for sure, Andy had got, got some ideas, but for him, it's, it's what is great that Andy is somebody who uh, um, breathes music. And uh, when he got th this music and, and he listened to this, then his mind is, is working. And, and then um, if he got a riff, he got influenced by this riff and then he, he starts working what um, what fits to this kind of music, mm -hmm. and this is great. Um, it's he, he's very talented in, with that. Yeah. So this show uh, for Live and Immortal was recorded in December of 2016 in uh, in Germany. Yep. Um, it's available on Blu-ray as well as the CD, DVD, and it's. I got to say, the Frontiers U.S. web shop has already sold out of the Blu-ray, but uh, I imagine there will be more available. It's it's it is available to pre-order on Amazon right now, or as of this morning. Um, it's also available as a double gold LP release, so that's pretty cool to have. Uh, you know, 
you started your journey with picking up a record at a flea market and, and now you're you're putting out yeah. records. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but it's like 40 years in between. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now a lot of this set list for this show came from the two Chronicles of the Immortals albums. Yeah. And uh hence the name Live and Immortal. Uh the Chronicles of the Immortals albums were based on vampire novels from Wolfgang Holbein and yeah. uh, and the theater adaptation from that. Uh, which was called, I believe, Blutnacht. Yeah. And what was it about these books that grabbed you guys' attention and, and made you want to write about it? Yeah, it was like that. Funny, I, I just cleaned up my room today and I found to this Chronicles of the Immortals, uh, there was a, a book spe especially written to this theater uh, musical. Crazy, I just found it this morning. <laughs> and um, and um, wait, I just, wait, funny. <laughs> Funny. It's so funny that you just talk about wait. I just got it. <laughs> I just found it this morning. Wow, there it is. Yeah, funny. Very cool. Um, and uh, um, it's called here, you see, uh, Chronicles. Uh, it's in German, it says Blutnacht, like Blood Knight, and mm -hmm. the Chronic of the Immortals. And this says the book. Uh, refers to the the rock opera crazy okay. absolutely crazy I, I i cleaned my room this is my music room <laughs> yeah. and uh, i found the book <laughs> crazy <laughs> um yeah um it was like that andy was getting in touch with wolfgang holbein which is a famous writer here in germany with german mm -hmm. language he sold millions of books millions absolutely famous in this kind of um yeah uh, vampire stories and uh, things like that and how I think, yeah, they, they started working about, on different things and then they decide, uh, can we do something to, together based on the stories what Wolfgang Holbein wrote before? I think it has like, it had like 12 books before or 11. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to make a new chapter of this, this Chronicles of the Immortals. I think this was a kind of series, like he had like 12 books. Yeah. Um, and um, so they, they made the next and um, Based on that um, uh, book, we Andy started to write the lyrics, which are based on the music, but which are um, different to the to the lyrics. It's not it's not like he copied um, uh, lyrics out of the book. He wrote mm -hmm. his own uh, lyrics to the to the music. Got it. And yeah, and then uh, like like a lot of times, one day to, to the other, Andy called and said, "Yeah, we are doing a rock musical together with Wolfgang Holbein, based on his." On his on on his books, and we make a special story, and we are already already in contact with the theaters, and now we have to start writing the music. So this was the kind of concept where we knew in front what is the story. This is important when you write a theater piece. You have to, you need the story in front, and then you start writing the songs, and then you can say, ah, this song is perfect as an opener. You need something very aggressive as mm -hmm. an opener, and you need a lot of, a big variation um for the for the songs because in the theater you can play like two hours just uh, kind of heavy metal music or hard rock music you, you need um, variations and um that's very important so chronicles of the mortals um is musical wise um if you see the the road of fountain plus it's maybe the, the two cities which are the most on the left and on the right because there are a lot of um, uh, um orchestra arrangements on it Okay. And and the songs are um, not uh, too much, um, and there are not too much um, progressive elements involved in these in the songs. There are some, and um, the, the story was like that. We when we wrote the songs, we first we included some solo stuff and progressive elements, and then the the guy who was um, creating the show, you know, who was responsible for the the, the show on stage. Uh, he said, "Yeah, but I, I, what shall what shall the actors do? One minute when you play guitar solo, so yeah. they can stand around, and that's so in the theater, no solo stuff, nothing. It has to go like that, 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 you know, sing, yeah. sing, sing, then curtain, and then it, it has to go one thing after the other because the the people in the audience they want to don't want to listen to guitar solo one minute. <laughs> so and then so we had to cut out all these progressive elements out of the music. So and." Uh, the the CDs they weren't planned. We we, we had this theater piece then, this rock opera, mm -hmm. 
And when we did the swap over uh, after the show, we were going out uh, to the place where the people were after the show and talking to some people and some fans. And they said, ah, okay, when is the CD coming from Chronicles of the Immortals? And, and I, I remember, uh, like it was yesterday, I said, there's no CD coming. It's just here for the theater. And they said, huh? <laughs> are you crazy? Why are you not doing a, a, a CD out of this? This is Funken Plus without um, progressive elements. And I said, yeah, the progressive elements are in our PC <laughs> because <laughs> we cut it out. And uh, so we heard it a lot of times. And then we said we were uh, talking in the band and, and we, we said, yeah, a lot of people are asking for a CD. Shall we do it? And then we said, yeah, we have like 20 songs up. It's too much. And so we decided to make Chronicles of the Immortals uh, one and two, mm -hmm. and so and then we and then uh, we said, yeah, we have to go back to the original songs and put in the solo stuff and the progressive <laughs> elements to yeah. make the songs again sounding like Fun and Blast. Put in all and the then, stuff you took out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we we had it. We we took it out. So later on, we we put it in, and then we had like the original songs back again, and these songs were recorded. And uh, this is the story of, of Chronicles of the Immortals. That's great. Yeah, but it, it was not our idea for, to, to record it. It was more that people were, were you know, it's, you know, like a, a, a promotion thing that people were asking for yeah. that. And because of this, we are, you know, it, it, this time it is, it, it's not a, not a story or a yeah. joke. It, it's really like that. that By popular it, demand. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, it's not like. Uh, uh, an uh, in, invented thing. It, it, uh, mm -hmm. it, it was like, um, yeah, it was, that was the story. And so we said, yeah, why not? Because if you have 20 songs in this kind of music and you don't uh, use them for a CD, it's a kind of mistake somehow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys put them out and put all the progressive elements back in. Yeah. What took so long between the show and this live set coming out? Why, why so long? Yeah. We <laughs> We had the same problem we had with the, the recording of the Proc Power CD. Uh, I think the, the Proc Power um, CD was recorded in 2011 and released in 2016. It was also like, or, or 17, it was also like five years or six years in between and the same thing now. Mm -hmm. um, pro, with the Proc Power CD, I was joking. I said, ah, we're doing it later because the people think we are younger. We're looking more fresh and uh, because we, do, we put it out so much later. And so the people think, oh, it's a young band. Um, no, uh, the thing is, uh, what I said in the beginning, um, we had so much to do uh, in between. So if you, if you remember all this, uh, if you remember the things I, I said with the yeah. what time the theater just, working on the theater uh, just really busy yeah. maybe you have to, to uh, it's the people don't know what how should they um we recorded this prop power for example in 2011 mm -hmm. and from that day shortly after that we started with the uh, chronicles of the models thing and to bring this concept on the theater stage, you need at least two years. It's it's that long. Mm -hmm. The songwriting, the, the lyric, the story, the, the actors on stage, you have to, who's on stage, you need rehearsals in front mm -hmm. of the first show. You have like eight weeks of, of rehearsals just to get the, the premiere done. And if you if you think about it and you count backwards from, if you say, the, the first show is in January 2014, for example. You start to work for that in January 2012. And in these two, two years, you have to do... It, it sounds so easy. Ah, you're doing the theater thing. Ah, you, you do these songs. and But um, you have to take care about the different keys of the songs. Who is singing? You know, you compose a song. It could be that somebody is singing, but it's not. he's not able to sing it in the key you composed it. So you have to transpose it and it's not that easy if you're a guitar player and you have a you have a song which is like you know you have a song which is like in the with the e string yeah you have uh -huh. your, and then uh, somebody's coming and saying I, I can't play in, in e this is e flat so i need it like three steps higher and you have a riff with the open e string and then you think okay how shall i play it without the open e string you have to figure out another voicing and all these things so and that's only for me it, yeah. No, every musician has to uh, uh, think about that. And uh, 
a lot of things like that. Uh, then some people are coming and saying, ah, we need this song, but we need it longer. Ah, you have this long song. Ah, we need it shorter. Ah, we need that <laughs> song, what you had in this position, we need it later on again, but in an acoustic version. Yeah. So many things. And then uh, that's the musical side. And if you ask Andy, it's like a domino thing. If you have a story, you know, you have all these parts. And if somebody the, who's involved in, in this whole process says, ah, in the beginning, we have to change something. It goes through all the stories. So if you change something in the beginning, you have to take care that everything what's coming later on is right. Mm -hmm. and you, you can't say, ah, I changed the story in the beginning and what's going on later, we don't care about. Because in the theater, it's live and the people see the reactions and they see if it's wrong or right. Mm -hmm. And Andy, it's all the time, he says, if we change something in the beginning, he says, ah, I have to go through the whole concept again mm. and have to see if this <laughs> special character is acting later on based on this reaction or something like that. Yeah, it's so, a domino effect. You... It's an absolutely yeah. domino effect. And, mm. you know, I, 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 uh, I um, tell this story and it takes one or two minutes to explain that. But if you, if you think about that, that it's not only a band, that there are like 10 kind of main characters that you have a choir of maybe 10 or 20 people and, and some mm. people which are with the which are not main characters so sometimes you have like 40 persons on stage sure you can re can realize that one different change one change can be different for a lot of things later on yeah. and yeah so it's not an excuse that the, that the release is so late but it explains why we need so long because we have different pro projects and uh, like this, we uh, we have this recording from uh, Kaiserslautern, I think, like one and a half year ago or something, two years ago, I, I was talking to the band and I said, hey, we have this uh, recordings from Kaiserslautern, which are great. We have uh, to uh, to um, release this, this recording, otherwise we are very stupid indeed. And then, yeah, but we had in, in between, we had uh, the, uh, the ghost experience. Uh, cities mm -hmm. like two yep. we had this um big box uh what we released with um with with the music from 1990 to 2015 i think like the, something like that yeah we had this release we had in between uh just every man was just uh, um, played but we already had um, the idea for last paradise lost so we already started to think about that yeah, and then time goes by and by, and and, uh, and a month is nothing. And after a month, you say, ah, ah, yeah, we wanted to look to the recordings of Kaisers Loud. Ah, yeah, we do it next month. Yeah, it's not an excuse, and it's not the best idea to do it like that. Yeah. But the good thing is, as we don't play so much live, and we don't have so much live DVDs, finally, we have a whole concert, uh, um, which is filmed now. So, um, I think the um, opportunities for Funtan Plus to play in South America or in uh, Japan, yeah. they are not that good. I think so, unfortunately. So mm. at least these people have the chance to see um, a whole show of Funtan Plus. And um, that, that was our goal because the prop power was great, but it was just like 60 minutes or uh, 70 minutes. And this is a whole show. And um, yeah, we are very happy that we, we work with Frontiers that they said, yeah, we're doing this uh, this uh, DVD. What is for a band like Fun Plus? I think it's not so normal or usual that a band in this kind of Fun Plus category uh, releases um, a package, like you said, LP, CD, DVD, Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Um, yeah, it's it's perfect. They, they do they are doing a great job for us. Yeah, well, I think your fans are going to enjoy this. I got a chance to get a sneak peek at you know the video, and I like the way it was shot. I think you guys can tell that, or I think the viewer can tell that you guys enjoy playing live. I, especially yeah. your brother. Your brother seems to have a very good time out there. Yeah. Um, I love I love the the close up cam on the drums. Yeah. Um, what is there any specific different challenge for you as a performer when a show is being uh, filmed? Do you have to be aware of where the cameras are or, or do you have to get out of the way sometimes? Is there anything special that you need to do? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, no, the thing is, we, we are absolutely not used uh, to being filmed 
at the show. So that's not, you know, today it's like that. If you play a show, it's filmed anyway, because somebody takes his mobile and films it and yeah. next day is on YouTube. So um, you are used to that, but you're not, we are not used to, Metallica is used to be filmed at every show because they are on the live screen and screens on the side. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think that there were the, the, um, the most important things was like, be uh, um, face to face to the audience, don't turn around too much, all these things, what you maybe sometimes do without thinking about that. So be present to the to the audience, things like that. But you're doing that anyway. If you play a live show, you know, who wants to stand with the back to the audience? Nobody <laughs> wants to do that. So I think it's no, I think it was a very, very regular fun and plus show like we are doing since 35 years. It wasn't it wasn't it's something there was no special thing where we thought in front of the show, ah, we have to do this, we have to do that. No, it was a very normal show. Yeah. Uh, did you put any extra thought into what you wear when you when you know it's going to be recorded? No. No? Just whatever you were going to do. As I said, it was a very <laughs> regular, regular show. Uh, yeah. But it's good on one side because it was like it was. Yeah. We, because if you, uh, uh, if, if you try to do something really, really... Um, uh, different from your normal shows. I, I'm not sure if, 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 it, if it's a good idea because yeah. then you focus on, ah, we have to do this, this is special and this. Like, for example, um, what I'm not a big fan of is for ourselves, for other bands, I don't know, but if you have a show, if you're doing a show like that and then you say, ah, we, we, are, we invite guests. This guest is singing that and this guest is singing that. Mm -hmm. And because my um, opinion for that was, if we do a live recording, the people want to see Fun and Plus. And they yeah. don't want to see Fun and Plus with this guest and this guest and this guest, which, you know, we, we could invite great musicians. That's not the point. But um, I thought, if, if, is it a good idea to focus on, on different musicians and on different this and different that instead just go on the stage, play your show like you, you're doing regularly and, and like, as I said, like more than 30 years. And this is what you can do the best. So yeah. I think it's, I, I think it was a good idea, just a good stage setup and some good lights and the audience, they like the show. And I think that's the most important. If you, if you go to concert, you want to have a good time. You want to see the band and if yeah. the band's playing good, you have a good time. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I think it's important too, when a band like yourselves, they don't, you don't get out on the road very often. It's great to have that that video document of what you guys do, and you guys yeah. don't always have guests coming out left and right. So yeah. I, I think you want it to be a normal show, and I think that um, this captured a great moment in time for you guys yeah. on, a, on a very specific tour. You guys already have a couple of tracks uh, out live on the um, on the streaming services, the digital services. You've got uh, Scarlet Flower Fields and Godmaker out there already as live singles. And I love that you have Scarlet Flower Fields because uh, Beyond Daylight's my favorite Phantom Plaza album. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, what, what goes into when you go out on tour or when, you, when you're when you doing a festival or doing a few shows, how do you guys determine what you're going to play uh, when you have such a, a large back catalog of songs? Yeah, that was maybe the only thing which was um, the special thing for this concert because um, we knew that we have to, uh, we should play some, a lot of songs from the Immortal CDs mm -hmm. because they were present at this time. Um, but uh, we had years before where we played like Rainmaker, all the time Rainmaker, Rainmaker, Rainmaker. I, I agree it's a good song and I like it and I understand that it's kind of a favorite song for the people who like Fun and Plus. But we played since 1997 and sometimes at the end I had the impression we don't play the song very well. Maybe not for the audience, but for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was not this enthusiasm for the... Somehow we felt, yeah, we leave it away. Even the people say, hey, you don't play Rainmaker. It's like uh, Scorpions don't play Rock You Like a Hurricane, for example. Yeah, but we, we had enough other songs. And this was in front of this special uh, gig. Um, for example, we, we thought we, we played Far of Grace, for example, for many, many years, which is live faith. Yeah? And we said, but with Scarlet Flower Fields, it has the same feeling somehow, but it's a song we, we have never played live before. 
Mm -hmm. And um, for me, this song is also one of my favorite songs because it has a lot of variation and deep feeling and somehow a huge chorus. And so we decided to play that song, which is not that easy. That, that was a kind of a surprise when we rehearsed it, um, that the song sounds so easy. But when you play it, uh, we thought, okay, we have to rehearse it again. Uh, it, honestly, it was, it was a, not a challenge, but it was a surprise. Um, and we had, uh, for example, this song and we had like Final Murder, which is a very long song where, where we said, okay, we, we, we changed the set list and include songs we, we have never played live before. So these were like songs like that. And uh, for sure, Godmaker and songs like that, we have, we, we need to play that. Or my, one of my faith uh, is Iodic Rain. For mm -hmm. example, I like that song so much. Uh, Maybe I can still remember when I was at the university, I studied um, geography beside music. And I wrote this song during I was in the university uh, when, <laughs> when, uh, when I was sitting in the, this big room where all the students are and I was like, da 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 I was like, oh, that could be a good song. <laughs> so it was one of my favorite songs. And I, I, like, I like the way how it's so aggressive. The song is very aggressive mm -hmm. so and uh, very powerful. And songs like that are kind of, songs we play mostly all the time we play live and we haven't played for example how many tears for a while and we thought that it's good to bring back a very old song again into the set list so I, i'm doing the set list um, uh, all the times so i do it and i present it to the band and so we discuss it and um, and when i sit down to make the set list yeah you have to, you think about the song then you uh, you say, ah, oh, no, we don't play it. And then you think, ah, oh, maybe we should do it. And so you make the set list again and again and again. And then you talk to the band. And yeah, like I said, like, like you also said, Scarlet Blower feels when we talked about it and everybody said, yeah, why not? It's a great song and we do it. And, and the people sure, we, oh, we hoped that the people will like it um, and reactions were great. Yeah. So uh, this was filmed by Oliver Barth, who has done some of your music videos, some of the Van and Plus uh, music videos. What did you think when you see yourself on a video and you see the performance, do you, I mean, do, how do you critique it? Do you sit there and look for your mistakes or, or do you, do you, uh, you know, how do you view seeing yourself playing live? Uh... I have to say that I don't look to it after it's out so much. Okay. So, um, like with the CDs, when we, we do the CD, we do the recordings, we produce it, then you check everything before you have the delivery date. Mm -hmm. But after the delivery date, I'm, I'm not sure that I ever listened to a whole CD of Fountain Plus after that. Okay. So, um, I, I, I listen to it for sure. I, so it's not that I don't listen to the music, but, um, but it's not that in the, when I, in the, I don't listen to music and in, the, in the car, I don't listen to music. So it's mm -hmm. not like that, that when I drive around, I, oh, I take a fun plus CD and I listen to the whole fun plus CD or at home. So, um, it's, it, it, you, um, I, I searched for the word, um, when the, when the video is out for sure, after the video is out, you look sometimes because you are you want to see how the, the reactions are and then you see them it's for the normal for the regular uh, um, videos for like for stone roses edge you look uh how are your moves that, do you play um it's like what's the word Syn synchron i don't know it's, it's um, oh yeah yeah in, in in sync with the video in, in sync if it's in yeah. sync yeah which is for me very important sure. if you if the musicians if, uh, do a fake video because they played with some that it's in sync because i think it's it's uh, if you look at videos and you see guitar play or drummer whatever and it's not in sync with this with the song that's not what i like so much so you look later on and, and you look <laughs> if you see the the the, the videos if, if it's in sync and how the whole atmosphere is um but you know i don't look at it every month two times or like yeah, yeah. and with the live video it's um, it's like that we had to look a lot of times to the video to to um, because uh, the, the cuts are very important. If you cut this scene and this scene and this scene, uh, is this is your musician too long at, at one point? You need another thing. So my brother did it to, together with Björn. My brother's very good with this 
um, cutting uh, videos because he mm. looks at it very uh, focused and mute, like a neutral person. Yeah, he said, <laughs> Stefan is not looking good. If it's a solo or not, we cut him <laughs> out. You know? so, yeah. so he's very strict with that. Yeah. And uh, it, well, it's good because if you if you are so emotional and you say ah, but I'm playing a solo, uh, but if you if it's not looking good or if yeah. you are if you think yourself ah, I look good, but he says yeah, but the light is not good. For example, you are in the dark, whatever. So he said no, and that yeah. was his his performance for the video. Um, but anyway, we had to look at it a lot of times if if everything is okay, and um, I looked at uh, the the first two songs, which on YouTube, I looked at it like two times, three times, but that's it. And uh, I, I just look at it to see, am I still happy? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I look at it like, is, is it something which is worth being shown to other people? Um, is it, it's, it's like, it's more like that. Um, it's hard to explain. It's not like, uh, I look at it to 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 see myself. Oh, I play on stage. It's more than mm -hmm. is it something to which is worth to being pre to being presented to people? Uh, will it make the people lucky and will they enjoy it when they see it? And that's the most important. So I look at it and if I say yeah, it's cool. If somebody sits in it's in Rio de Janeiro and he puts on YouTube and he looks at Fun Blast and he says, ah, oh, it's cool. I, I see Fun Blast playing uh, Scarlet Flower Fields and he's enjoying the video. That's it. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. Stefan, what's next for Van and Plus? What's coming up for you guys? Uh, now we just, um, we had this last Paradise Lost, which we played at two theaters. It will be, uh, we played end of November. The, the next um, rehearsal starts in they start in, in Austria, in Innsbruck, it's the next, so, the, and it will be played there in January uh, next year. And uh, yeah, and we, uh, we are writing songs for the next CD, or right. they are written already, so I hope they have to be, we have to look at all the songs, the songs to see which song fits together. Um, um, we, it was good with the last CD that we, we're going a bit back to the older Fund and Blast style. Mm -hmm. And um, I think to include a bit more progressive elements. Yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we are not commercial anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> but not but not in a te technical way. That's not that's not Fund and Blast. For the technical side, there are other bands which could do it much better. But um, uh, it, it's cool with Fund and Blast if you write a song when it's already six minutes and you think, oh, but I have a cool part. Yeah, then it's eight minutes. So you just do it. And this is a, a musical freedom, which is great. And not a lot of bands have this, especially in the pop genre. Not, absolutely not. And that's a very cool thing. If you if you have a new idea and the song is already done and you have a new idea, you just say, ah, I add it. And if it's cool, we do it. So we write songs and um, we will, start the recording maybe some stuff we will start record before um before uh, innsbruck or um at the time when innsbruck is uh, what's the word uh, at the same time we are in innsbruck we have to record also the cd so that's that's what we are doing now so we have we have to do a lot yeah imagine so so the the CDs and DVD, Blu-ray, LPs, all of it. It's called Live and Immortal. Release date is August 12th on Frontiers Music. I hope it does really well for you guys. I, I really think that your fans are going to like this, especially since you don't get out and play live very often. And I enjoyed it because I haven't seen any live footage of you. So it was nice to see a full concert too. So, um, Stefan, thank you so much for your time and telling me about this. I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your time, and uh, thanks for the time you spent with me. You uh, you can find out more about Van der Plas at their website, vandenplas.de. You also have uh, Facebook and Instagram. I don't think you're on Twitter. Um, no. Uh, might I'm be not, wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm not into these things. Uh, Andy takes care about all these Facebook things, so I'm, I know that Facebook exists. Yeah. It exists. That's true. <laughs> and sometimes I'm on my Facebook site, but I'm not a Facebook guy. 
All right. Thank you so much for telling me about this. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks.